Like everyone, I've taken many paths on life's trails. I've tripped and stumbled on some rocky paths that I've chose. My cancer path was unexpected. This trail has tough inclines and some roll down descents. I didn't know how much more my faith could be tested. Yet, when I fall now, I seem to land flat on my faith. My name is Carla Hale and I live in Southwest Missouri. Currently, I'm living and thriving with stage four neuroendocrine cancer, also known as NET. As I reflect on this complicated cancer journey, I identify it as the hardest hike in my life. As a small town girl, I grew up surrounded by a faith-filled family with an identical twin sister and older sister and my mom and dad. Our community was very tight-knit. Throughout my 20s, I tackled life, becoming a teacher and my favorite, a mom to two amazing sons. Life was filled with family get-togethers, camping, ball fields, lots of laughter. My 30s delivered many life changes, including an accident in my late 30s that would later mask symptoms of this cancer. Like all of us who have stress, I would do my best to take care of myself while leaning on faith. My sons continued growing and I moved into a higher level position at school. Symptoms, relationships, and my career revolved in my 30s. Eventually, following school and jobs, both sons joined the Air Force. Debris of diagnosis littered my life. An accident masked many symptoms of my cancer. I was diagnosed with IBS, diabetes, abdominal pain, memory loss, menopause, and two gene mutations. When a physician recommended that I leave my career to pursue better health, my faith in nature consoled me when nothing else would. I felt so alone. I had a heavy heart, yet was hopeful my health would improve. Several years in the RV proved simpler and easier on my life gave me a fresh take on trails, yet they were still littered with stumps and rocks of health hazards. They tried to change me, as I didn't want to explain to anyone what was wrong with me. After work camping a few seasons back in Missouri, I decided to buy a small home and write full-time to best manage all of my symptoms. During these maintenance years of managing, I self-published a kid's book about the state of Missouri. Getting back into schools was my favorite thing. In addition, I had two new daughters-in-laws and three new grandbabies life was really good. It was always my goal to be healthy enough to see them. As my faith continued to grow, so did my tumors. Twenty twenty two began with a breast biopsy. Breast cancer is what I feared the most. I ended up with a back injury, and by April had a bad bout of COVID. In May, I thought I was getting stronger again. I was back in schools visiting. My hiking tribe and friends knew all of my struggles, which I called episodes for years. In May of that year, I visited more students and felt hopeful that my health would be growing stronger. But that evening, I had another episode. This time, it was so severe and it wouldn't go away. Eventually, I had to call someone to take me to the ER. I'll never forget the look on my family's faces when the doctor walked in and said I had a mass that was about 10 by 10 centimeters on my pancreas. That evening, I was transported to a Springfield hospital where many of us thought I only had months, if not weeks, to live. My sons and family were able to get home and I began planning as if I wasn't going to live very long. After many scans and tests, it was determined that I have this rare cancer, neuroendocrine cancer. Many call this a good cancer, but it doesn't go away. It was shared with me, Carla, it's inoperable and uncurable, but it's treatable. Within the month, my amazing oncologist and team, who's only seen four of us in his career, started me on oral, oral chemo. By the fall, after external beam radiation on my hip, pelvis, and back, I started PRRT, with a, which is a special kind of radiation for this cancer. Dr. Loban shared, this is a marathon, not a sprint. With platelets plummeting and so many side effects from the treatment, my body was just getting tired and worn out. Side effects tried to sideline me again, but each time my faith sustained me. Finding lac nets changed my life. Meeting and talking with others who are going through the same thing as me gave me encouragement and hope. They become like family to me. And because of them, I was able to connect with experts across the country. 
By late summer of 23, I was accepted to the National Cancer Institute with the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Del Rivera became my, del my net expert and Dr. Jonathan Hernandez, my surgeon. In November of last year, I underwent a major operation to remove my primary tumor on my pancreas, my spleen, gallbladder, many lymph nodes, and several uh, tumors off my liver ablated and resected. Hiking is much different now. Much like this rain today, there are lots of unforeseen circumstances that come in, into my trails. Monthly SSAs and bone infusions are key essentials in my backpack now. Lymph nodes and bone metastasis means treatments really can't stop. Fatigue, glucose issues, bone pain kind of try to sideline me, even though I look good from the outside there's still some pain on the inside. There will be symptoms, and with faith, I pray that my liver stays stable. My faith, family, and friends, the LACNETS community, and my writing community of friends and family continue to support me as I do them. This cancer is like having a rock in my hiking boot that I can never remove, much like Apostle Paul's thorn in his side. Although I can't completely remove it, I can treat it and my faith can grow stronger. I'm not able to hike the mountains or the hills I used to hike because my reserves are low, but this journey has made me stronger. My life is filled with learning, connections, blood work, scans, many doctor's appointments, and also new friends. But I have a life and I'm blessed to have it. If there's any message I hope to convey, it's to be an advocate for yourself. If you feel something is wrong, seek help. Demand a scan if you must. Although this is a trail I never expected, I'm at peace. I'll keep advocating for myself and most importantly, for others. I'll continue to walk by faith, giving God all the glory for my life. I can still lace up my boots and hug my family. My kids and grandkids provide such joy and love and hope. Hug your family and tell them how much you love them. I'll continue to rest in the valleys and enjoy every view on my journey. Don't lose faith.